Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to look back at my 2020 intentions and see how I've done and we're going, get, we're going to set intentions for 2021. So if you're new here or if you haven't seen one of these videos from me before, I don't set goals, um, I set intentions or I kind of make intentions for the year uh, because for me a goal is stressful. <laughs> I'm very goal orientated as a person and for me books and booktube and reading shouldn't be stressful it's something that I want to enjoy so I kind of set intentions for my for the for the year ahead instead I have gone back and watched last year's video which I will link in the description um try not to laugh too hard although I think I might have been wearing this jumper I wear this jumper a lot as you guys have probably noticed um yeah so what a year um which might be the understatement of the century uh watching that video was kind of weird because it just feels like a more innocent time and I just watched it thinking wow you have no idea what is coming over the hill um I said in that video that I just wanted 2020 to just be really calm and relaxed and no drama and boy did it go the other way uh when I filmed that video I knew at the end of 2019 I knew that I was going to be applying to do the PGCE which is the teaching qualification and I knew that it was likely that my whole life was going to change because of that um, and so I didn't want any other kind of drama or anything else to think about in 2020 and that's just not how it's gone. Um, yeah, it's it's been, it's been a really weird 12 months. I have been very lucky and very aware of my privilege this year because I have been able to work from home since March, well, from March until October. Um, I wasn't furloughed, neither was my husband. We were very, very lucky. Um, and yeah, it's been hard to be at home all the time. It's been hard not to be able to see people we love. It's been hard not to go and do the things that we wanted to do. And it's definitely taken a toll on our mental health, but we have been lucky, touch wood, you guys are on our wooden coffee table. Uh, we've been lucky that nobody we know has died. Uh, a few of people that we know um, have had the virus and have been quite ill with it. But we're lucky that everyone is still here at the time of filming. Um, we've not been particularly financially impacted by the pandemic which again I know is a massive privilege so yeah it could have been a lot worse but it is still worth acknowledging that it's been a hard year and it's been a weird year and I think it's a year that's going to have ramifications for quite a long time to come so let's have a little go back I, I can't I'm not um clever enough with technology to be able to like put that video on the screen like ideally that's what I would have been doing and just watching it with you but I can't do that so I've rewatched that video which I'll link for you um and then I've written down the intentions that I went into 2020 with so my first intention was to read 150 books I've definitely done that I reached that in October at the time of filming this and filming this at the start of December and I've read 180 books this year which is just nuts and I feel like the number of books that people read is kind of a weird topic within the book community because I got friends who have read like 365 books in a year and it's just like what um but I've also got friends that have read like 30 books in a year both of those are valid and I saw somebody on Twitter a while ago being like oh I want to start booktube but I don't feel like I read enough books in a month and it's like no 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 it's not about volume it's about your opinion and who you are and what you can bring to your channel and it doesn't matter if you read five books a year or 500 books a year you're still valid your voice is still valid as a booktuber um for me reading that many books in a year i've never read that many books ever in a year before uh it's definitely reflective of the fact that i have been in my house pretty much from march until now well until um september october time when i started my degree um which is definitely reflective of that but i think it's also reflective of the fact that reading is so important to me and my well-being and my mental health because I started the PDC in September and life has just been ridiculously busy ever since. Since October I've been on placement in a secondary school and I barely have time to turn around in the day but I'm still reading at pretty much the same level and I think it just shows how important reading is to me because I've dropped other stuff but reading, my reading's pretty much stayed the same and it's because I really, really need it. So yeah, 2020 has been a year where I've read more books because I've been at home more but also because I've realised how important it is for me to read um, and to be continually reading and taking in books it's just important for my brain so yeah I have definitely met that intention of 150 books which is great I wanted to keep up with what the book club read which is my Atwood um, at the moment we're rereading all of the Margaret Atwood books 
um, and I have done that. We read 12 books this year. Again, at the time of filming, we're reading the Penelope Plant. I can't say it. It's the retelling of Penelope from the um, Odyssey. Uh, we're reading that in December. We've read 12 books across the year. It's been really fun. Managed to keep up with it, even though, uh, even with my PGCE. And yeah, it's been a good time. So I've done that. I wanted to run 1,000 pages readathon, which I did back in January, back at the start of the year before anybody had heard of the word pan well obviously we'd heard of the pandemic but before everything kicked off uh, I really enjoyed doing that um I'd never run a readathon on my own before which is hard work it turns out um but I had a great time I've met some really good people that way so yep yeah, that's a big tick I wanted to read one non-fiction book a month I have definitely done that I've noted down here that I've read 20 but I did write these notes a couple of weeks ago so it might have been a bit more since then um, but I've read at least 20 non-fiction books in 2020 and I've read a real range of stuff that I've just found really interesting I've really enjoyed it so I've definitely cracked that as in like getting that into my reading diet really thoroughly enjoyed it I also wanted to read one classic a month and again I've written 13 down here uh, so I've definitely met that um, because that's more than one a month I've had a brilliant time doing it you can see some of the beautiful classics I have here um, and again I feel like oh and there's some more there as well and again, I feel like much with the nonfiction, I have definitely cracked getting that into my reading diet every month. So yeah, really enjoyed that. And then number six is the only one that I have not achieved, but it was out of my control. And that was to use the library more. Um, I, originally, I said that I wanted to get at least one library book out a month. I just haven't. And the reason for that is pandemic and the cat is scratching at the door, which is very annoying. Um, he's got about 500 other places he could sleep in this house. He's fine. Um, Jack, honestly, actually that might not even be Jack, that might be Luna, one second. That was Luna scrabbling at the door and then scratching the carpet, which is why I had to stop filming. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you probably will have seen her. She's not even our cat, she's the neighbour's cat and she just comes in occasionally to cause havoc and run around with Jack. If I tried to pick her up, she'd probably bite me, she's not the most um, friendly creature with humans. So I've just got the door open now, so if you hear padding about, it's Luna. Uh, yeah, what was I talking about? The library. So yeah, originally I wanted to read one book a month from the library. That didn't happen. I managed it in January and February and then everything kicked off in March and that was the end of that. We live outside of Bath so uh, I wasn't able to get to one. There isn't a library in our village or anywhere close. So I just couldn't do that one. Here she is back again. Hello Trouble. She's now trying to bite my arm. Are you going to come on camera? She's like, no. I'm gonna bite your knee instead, lovely. So those were my 2020 intentions. And aside from the library one, which was, oh, I know I've got the postman coming. It's all happening today. Um, aside from the library one, which was out of my control, I did manage to meet all the others. So let's talk about 2021. So in 2021, I will be continuing my PGCE until June, hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be qualifying. And then hopefully in September, I will be starting a new job um, in a school. Uh, but we will see what happens. I will also be chopping my hair off in 2021. Um, if you guys, you guys might have noticed, I don't know if you've noticed these things or not. Uh, this time last year, I had very short hair, right up here. Um, I decided to grow it in January and I was gonna cut it off in August and donate it to the Little Princess Trust, which I've done before. When we got to August, uh, I wasn't comfortable going to a hairdresser because of the pandemic, so I left it. And now it's become this kind of symbolic thing and I feel like I'm gonna grow it keep growing it through my PGCE and then chop it off next August. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will have a job to go into. So I'll cut it off just before then and hopefully have a lot more to donate to the Little Princess Trust. I've done it, this will be my fifth time. Um, and yeah, it's just something that I think is important to do. My, I'm lucky that my hair grows quickly and if it can help somebody else, that's great. So that's one of the things I'm gonna be doing. So let's go through my intentions. That's kind of the year. So yeah, next year will all be will be all about finishing my PGCE, qualifying and hopefully starting a new job. Uh, Charlie will be starting secondary school in September because he's 11 now. And we'll just see where else the year takes us. I think there's one thing I've learned from 2020, it's not to have like too firm expectations for a year, but let's talk intentions. So first of all, I would like to read 100 books. Now, obviously this year, at the moment, I'm on about 180 books. We'll see where I get by the end of the year because we've still got three or four weeks. Um, I'm only setting it, I'm setting it at 100 because I just don't know what my workload is gonna be like. 100 is a nice kind of round number. If I don't reach it, it's no big deal. If I get above it, then great, but we'll see what I do. I want to continue with what the book club read. However, 
I think I'm gonna close the Twitter account. Um, I've been running it since we started last year and I'm not very good at running it, to be honest. I kind of forget it's there sometimes. With my PTC, it's just one of those extra things I don't really have time for. I don't get masses of interaction on there from people and I feel like if you wanna join in uh, with reading Atwood books, they can find me really easily on Twitter and Instagram, which by the way, always linked in the description of these videos um, or on my videos. So I think I'm gonna close the specific Twitter account. And also I was talking about keeping it going after May, which is when we will finish the Atwood um, read along. But to be honest, I don't think I will. I can't think of another kind of niche or theme or author that I really wanna read loads of. There are so many book um, clubs out there and I feel like they're better run than I can and people who've got like more time and energy to put into them. So I think we will finish in May, which is when the, we will be reading the last Atwood book. Um, I have enjoyed it and it's been really nice to like interact with other people that want to read Atwood but I just there aren't enough people for me to like put loads of time into it um, and I feel like those who are interacting with me about Atwood we will continue to chat anyway and if anyone wants to join us like I said you're more than welcome to but I think it's just one of those things where I think by May it will probably run its course so yeah that will be something that happens in 2021. I want to continue to read I want to be, oh, let's try again. I want to continue reading diversely. So um, obviously one of the things that was kind of brought front and center and it should have been already uh, this year was the need to um, read diversely, both in the authors that you're reading and the topics and subject matters. And I wasn't great at reading diversely at the start of this year. I was mostly reading white authors and white stories, which wasn't deliberate. Um, but it still wasn't okay. Um, and so what I did was I put a lot of black and um, POC authors onto my wish list and onto my um, Goodreads TBR and then books have gradually started filtering through because what I didn't want to do is be performative with it because that's just not, not the thing either. Um, so I've kind of naturally and organically started to pick up more diverse books. I found some absolute corkers. If you saw last week's video, which is my favourite reads of the year, you um, will see on that list there's several um, books that I wouldn't have previously picked up, but I did this year and I'm so glad that I did. And that's something I want to keep up next year. I'm not going to put a number on it like I used to with classics and non-fiction because again, that just feels performative. And now there's a knock at the door. All my days. Sorry guys, <laughs> this is what happens when I try and film on a Saturday morning. It's all kicking off. We've got cats and postmen and deliveries and... Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was saying how I didn't want to put a number on it um, like I used to do with uh, classics and non-fiction because again, it feels a bit performative um, but I will be making sure that when I put my TBRs together each month that there are diverse books on there. I, it's going to happen naturally anyway. I've got loads more on my wish list and on my like, I have a little list of like books I'm going to buy myself if I don't get them for Christmas and there's stuff on there. And I'm really excited for all the new books that are coming through. I've also um, realised in March time just how white my YouTube, or my booktube sus subscription feed was. Um, not entirely, but it was, it was predominantly white, which again is not okay. It wasn't deliberate, but it's not okay. So I've divers diversified there as well. And that will also start to like naturally put other books on my radar. So yeah, that's definitely one thing I wanna do. Um, number four is to keep posting one video a week. So at the start of the year, I was doing two videos a week on a Wednesday and a Sunday. I dropped that down to one when I started my PGCE and I've been uploading at 9 a.m. on a Sunday every week and I wanna keep that up through the rest of the year. I don't know what's gonna happen with my booktube channel next year. None of us do. Um, I'm hoping to keep it going. Uh, I, I love being here on booktube. I love making videos. I love chatting to you guys. I love everything about it. Um, but obviously can't make any promises because I don't know what next year is gonna bring. But ideally you'll get one video a week from me at least. Occasionally that I might throw up a, uh, another one if I do a vlog or something. Um, but yeah, I'm aiming for one video a week. And then my last intention for next year is readathons. So I ran the thousand pages readathon this year. I then co-hosted mental healthathon with Nicole and Simone in May. Uh, and then in, was it June? I think we did it in June, or was it May? It was over the summer. Uh, me, Leanne from Literary Diversions and Emma from Drinking By Myself did Books for the Brave, which I absolutely loved. We raised about 1600 pounds, I think in the end, which was amazing for the NHS. We wanted to do a second round at the end of this year, but life has just got in the way for all three of us. Um, I really, really enjoy 
hosting and running readathons but at the moment it is tricky trying to have the energy to even think about it and to fit it in but next year ideally i would like to bring back the thousand page readathon for another round um and we will see what else happens but i do want to i do want to be doing some more readathons and also taking part I've barely taking part in any readathons at the end of the year which does make me sad because there are so many great ones that happened um so yeah for next year i want to be taking part and also running hopefully some readathons this cat that doesn't even live in my house is causing mary havoc come here is she gonna come no she's just gonna scratch the carpet which is ideal so those are my intentions for 2021 drop me a comment below tell me what you are intending for next year if you haven't subscribed and you want more of this complete messy chaos luna if you, want, if, you, if you haven't subscribed and you want more of this mess, please click the button below and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.